Once upon a time, a drunk man was walking on the street around 3 a.m. and was approached by the police. The policeman asked, where are you going around this hour? And he answered, I'm going to attend an, a, a conference on alcohol abuse and the lethal effects on the body, the bad example it creates for children, the harmful consequences for the family, both financially and my, with my lack of presence, and in addition to keeping my family worried. Now, the surprised policeman responded, really? Who will give such a lecture at this time of night? The drunk man responded, my wife, as soon as I get home. <laughs> Friends, to many of us, uh, that is a, a, a joke. And f unfortunately, for some others, that is reality. Brothers and sisters, in the United States of America, we have been embraced with a wonderful, awesome country. Uh, the United States is great. It is the land of the free and the home of the brave. It is a place where, ideally, no one is above the law and things happen in a democratic way, meaning you take into consideration the vote of the people. We elect representatives and the taxes we pay help society and builds infrastructure. The founding principles of our nation concern having the freedom and autonomy to do what you want. For instance, freedom of worship, freedom of speech, the freedom to bear arms, freedom to demonstrate or protest, and so much more. In theory, the government is called to respect the rights and liberties and decisions of an individual unless it gets in the way of freedom and the freedom of others, generally like when a crime is being committed. However, you and I know that freedom is a nice fancy word that illustrates free will. It is something that God gave you and me as we have the power to make good decisions and also have the power to make bad ones. Nonetheless, our actions have consequences. And if these consequences end up getting, uh, getting us stuck in a bad habit or robs us of our ability to grow, then the decisions made are not giving us freedom. They are, on the other hand, keeping us enslaved. So whose law is the right law? Brothers and sisters, it is God and God alone. We hear in the first reading today of the prophet Jeremiah calling out the people, the leaders for leading the sheep astray and doing so for their own benefit. The kings of this Babylonian exile were scattering the flock, caring for themselves and causing division. However, through the prophet, the Lord promises justice. And you and I know justice is actually Jesus Christ, the long expected Messiah. And this Messiah is not a man that only sets this kingdom back on top, but one that gives all men the gift of life and sustenance, showing us how to live life well, living this life for God and for the good of the world around us. For this reason, brothers and sisters, the Lord is our shepherd, Jesus Christ, who knows every single thing about you and me, including the things that we want to hide from the world. Jesus wants to teach you. Jesus wants to show you his love. Therefore, we must stop letting the world and its distractions suffocate us because they are not good enough. We stop letting our limited understanding of God's ways to cause you to stray because God knows better than you. We stop comparing ourselves to other people because God built you cell by cell and can count them way more than you ever can. Today, friends, we allow the person that knows us best to guide us to that which is best. And because you cannot and will not get there on your own. Because you're too busy doubting the route, you might be too busy fighting others or challenging your own mind to see if you're doing the right thing. But Jesus wants to alleviate you from that burden so as to allow you to live in freedom and peace 
something that only he can bring. In God becoming man, Jesus models in his own very self the gift of the priesthood. It is a priesthood that we have all obtained in our own baptism. It is a function of God's glory where you and I are called to unite, not divide, to bring peace and not cause worry, to bring truth and not doubt. Therefore, being a good example of the faith is more like a responsibility and not a true option in freedom because doing the opposite does not set us free. Friends, if the Lord is our shepherd and yet we still sin, it is important to ask, what, what am I being led by? Are we led by our foolish pride, thinking that we are the standard of what is right and just? Are we led by others who call themselves or at least make themselves the savior? Are we led by our own fleshly desires, doing whatever it takes to obtain the things that we are attracted to? Are we led by our own goals and determined to reach them? Are we led by society and what society deems as normal? Friends, it just so happens to be that none of these things that I mentioned lasts forever. However, God does. We must be led by the God who lives forever because you and I have been fashioned and made to live forever. Jesus Christ is God, and he informs us of the way to live freely. And our understanding of it is not more necessary than God's own understanding. Needless to say, our sin is never just our own. It has consequences for ourselves and for the world around us. We are called to, for instance, go to Mass each week because God knows that when we stop, we are prone to honoring ourselves instead of honoring the one that actually gives life. For instance, we stay away from bad things on the internet because the things in private shape our mind to think inward instead of outward, something that rubs off on our relationships and the way we treat others. We treat people with respect and honor so that they too don't have to doubt their own worth and seek it in unhealthy ways. We also refrain from lying because the only defense good enough is the security of God's love. Therefore, know your worth. As an analogy, notice how a bottle of water at Sam's may cost 25 cents, and that same bottle at another normal grocery store may cost 50 cents. At a bar, it may cost $2. At a restaurant or a hotel, it may cost $3. At an airport or a plane, that same bottle may cost $5. If the bottle and the brand is the exact same, but varies in price because of the location, maybe it's safe to say that the location gives value to the product. Therefore, here in society, or in the workplace, or in our recreational area, your worth is not, is not as important as it is in the kingdom of God. Therefore, why do we uh, leave God's kingdom in search or in appreciation of every other kingdom that doesn't know you or love you as much. Oftentimes I hear, but Father, I'm only human. And that phrase, friends, cannot be a justification of a bad action, especially when being human illustrates how great and how chosen we are in the eyes of God. Today is the day we embrace the mindset of true discipleship. We live, we move, and we breathe in Christ. Let us let go of those echo chambers of life and society and be instructed by the living, true God. And just FYI, those echo chambers exist even in politics, even in the great polarization of our country. We live as Catholics. We don't live to divide. Friends, 
you must encounter Christ in the desert, in the freedom of zero distractions that lie and manipulate you into destruction. We find our worth and our value in Christ, that our actions too may have a positive consequence for the kingdom of God.